Six months after a nuclear apocalypse, a teenage loner survives capably by himself while searching for his girlfriend. With the threat of warring teenage tribes and cannibalistic zombie adults, accepting the help of people from his past might be the only way to survive. 17-year-old Josh was an average high school student before the nuclear apocalypse. Despite most of his loved ones perishing, he considers Glendale City turning into a dystopia as the best thing to ever happen. Josh moved into a house previously owned by an Armenian gangster, and his new mantra, Finders Keepers, allows him to guiltlessly hoard whatever unnecessary things he can get his hands on. He believes the bombs were biological in nature because they killed most people above the age of 18. The remaining adults turned into ghoulies, zombie-like creatures whose mental capacities only allow them to repeat the last thing they were thinking. Although ghoulies may seem dumb, they aren't harmless. Josh sees a ghoulie catch a squirrel and devour it. He spends most of his days racing down empty streets in a convertible, watching TV shows on the jumbotron of a football stadium, and riding a skateboard while vandalizing storefronts. Inside a weapon store, Josh sees a katana and remarks that all iconic swords have names. He decides to name his sword Sam. That night, he pulls into his driveway to find a mutant pug that has broken into his garage and is trashing his house. After the apocalypse, animals suffered from varying side effects as well. The next day, Josh goes on a quest to search for a new house. He says the most important characteristic when choosing a house post-apocalypse is if one can build a minefield, moat, or drawbridge to protect it. If the potential house fails to pass the criteria, it's best to keep searching. Minutes later, Josh stands outside an apartment, looking despondent. He takes a note from his pocket, reading, Where are you? Suddenly, he hears a noise and hides. Seconds later, a masked man on a motorcycle towing a young boy in a cage drives by. Josh says the man is Baron Triumph, a mysterious cannibal who catches kids to eat. Josh explains that after the bombs drop, the high school kids that survived banded together with the same circle of friends they had in high school. These tribes include the Disciples of Kardashian, the 4-H Club, the Jocks, the Stem Punks, and numerous others, each with a designated territory in the city. Later, Josh comes upon a church and thinks it'd make a good home. As he walks closer, he sees a modified golf cart and is disappointed that the jocks have beaten him to it. Moments later, he hears a girl scream from inside the building. He enters the church and sees the golf team harassing a blonde girl inside a confessional booth. The girl sees him and calls out his name for help. The golf team captain, Terry, sees the intruder and tells the others to ready their weapons. Terry threatens to kill Josh, so he unleashes his katana. Josh proclaims he isn't scared because he has a great origin story. Bemused, Terry asks him to entertain them with a stale, and they just might let him live. Before the apocalypse, Josh meets Principal Burr in the man's office. Burr welcomes the teenage boy to the school as a recent transfer student from Toronto. Burr then uses plastic walnuts to explain a metaphor for Josh coming out of his shell. Then, Josh asks if the walnuts are real, and Burr says the school can't have any real nuts because of some students' allergies. The principal then lists off these students, including one named Terence Marcasian. In the present, the jocks are bored with Josh's story. They wonder how he managed to survive for six months by himself, and Josh says it's because he can fish, hunt, rig solar panels, and purify water using his urine. Terry thinks Josh's skills can be useful for them, and wants to capture and place a shock collar on him. Josh declines Terry's abysmal offer to join them because he has a sacred mission to accomplish. During his meeting with Burr, a beautiful blonde teenage girl joins them, and Josh is instantly enamored. Burr introduces Sam to Josh, the girl he eventually names his katana after. Later, Sam shows Josh around the school, and he notes how she's friendly with everybody. He asks her how she does it, and she says Burr used her to figure out which group's new students belong to, like a human sorting hat from Harry Potter. Then, Josh asks her where she thinks he belongs, and she isn't quite sure but gladly accepts the challenge of figuring him out. In the present, the jocks laugh at Josh because they think Sam is out of his league. Josh says he loves Sam and promised to keep her safe from creep, just like the golf team. He then orders them to let Sam go, certain she's the girl in the booth. Terry says they can't do that because they have their mission to round up stragglers. Terry orders Gary to place a collar on Josh's neck, but Josh holds up his katana to protect himself. Terry flips him off and laughs, and Josh sees his opportunity to do something cool. Seconds later, Josh winks the katana, hoping to slice off Terry's middle finger cleanly. However, his aim is off, and he buries the sword in Terry's hand. After his failed attempt, Josh apologizes profusely as Terry howls in pain. The sword is stuck in the bone, so as the other members of the golf team attack Josh, he drags Terry around with him. Afterward, Josh shouts to Sam to get out and escape. The booth door opens and out pops a 10-year-old blonde girl, Angelica, who lights a Molotov cocktail and threatens to burn down the church. Josh is disappointed that the girl in the booth wasn't Sam. Josh then apologizes to Terry and says they can keep the girl. Offended, Angelica asks what's wrong with him. 
He reminds her that he babysat her three times, and she's tried to light him or his things on fire each time. Seconds later, Terry interrupts the conversation and points out the katana still stuck to his hand. Josh pulls off the sword and warns the jocks not to follow him, mainly because he used the blade to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and Terry needs to find an EpiPen immediately. Terry wonders how his enemy knows about his nut allergy, and Josh remembers Burr listing off the Glendale High School students who are allergic to nuts, and Terrence, or Terry, Marcasian was one of them. As Josh exits the church, Angelica follows him and is in disbelief that he was going to leave her. He says he isn't worried about her because even ghoulies are afraid of her. The girl knows he was bluffing about the katana being laced with peanut butter because she knows he dislikes peanut butter. On the street, they see a street samurai wearing a ronin hat. As the person approaches, Josh recognizes Wesley, one of his bullies from before the apocalypse. Months ago, Josh minds his business by the lockers when Wesley and his friend Hoyles discuss katanas. Wesley takes a katana from his locker and asks Josh for his opinion on the weapon. Josh says he'd rather have a gun and Wesley scoffs. When the bell rings, Hoyles trips Josh, who falls to the floor. Wesley pretends to help him up but quickly moves his hand away before everyone around them laughs. In the present, Wesley considers himself a pacifist samurai who wants to atone for his wrongdoings in his previous life. He's made a vow to guide lost spirits through the wasteland. Wesley knows Josh is searching for Sam, and he's gotten information that she might be at the mall. This worries Josh because the mall is Baron Triumph's territory. Moments later, Angelica sees the golf team and tells the other two they need to run away now. Terry fires a smoke signal to the sky in the shape of a smiley face to alert the other jocks. On a nearby football field, the jocks are adorned in black football pads as they watch their form of entertainment, American Ninja Idol. They make a scared young man sing on a raised platform. When their masked leader Turbo doesn't like what he hears, a trapdoor opens, causing the man to fall into an enclosure full of ghoulies. The man fearfully climbs over the fence and escapes the zombies, but Turbo takes his bazooka and blows the man up anyway, to the crowd's delight. The jock second in command, Mona Lisa, shows Turbo the signal, and the imposing kingpin grunts wordlessly to his followers. Then, the jocks climb into their Mad Max-style modified vehicles and head out. Meanwhile, Josh and his companions hide from the golf team. Josh takes Wesley's blunt and throws it on the ground. Shortly after, the trio head into Josh's old apartment, which he now uses for storage. Wesley is amazed at all the essentials Josh has procured, including a mini fridge with type O negative blood for transfusions. Angelica remarks that many of the items seem too specific for having a girl over, and Josh admits he was preparing in case he found Sam. Before the apocalypse, Sam hangs out in the apartment and finds a post-it note. His mother got full custody, which is why they moved to Glendale. His mother leaves for work before dawn, so she leaves notes for him. In his bedroom, Josh shows Sam a shoebox full of notes and jokingly introduces her to his post-it note parent, to her amusement. Seconds later, Sam leans in for a kiss, but he stops her because he doesn't want a pity peck for their first kiss. She understands and compliments him on his radical honesty. In the present, Josh tells the other two to take what they need and thanks Wesley for telling him where Sam is. Angelica mentions the possibility that Sam might not even be at the mall and could be dead. However, the determined teenager believes Sam is still alive because she left him a note, just like his mom used to. Suddenly, they hear vehicles outside and when they look out the window, they see the jocks gathering on the street. Josh wonders how they could know where they were. Outside, the golf team shows the other jocks Wesley's blunt that gave away the trio's location. They start to pelt rocks into the apartment, breaking the windows. Inside, Angelica thinks they need to escape and Josh reminds her that they aren't a team. She and Wesley agree that Josh will require their help. Josh doesn't want the assistance of two people who made his life hell in high school. Angelica says the only way they'll find the answers to why the adults turned into ghoulies and to save the jocks, who themselves are still kids, is for them to stick together. Outside, the jocks think that the three aren't coming out and prepare to enter the apartment. Suddenly, a blood-filled balloon hits Terry, covering him with red liquid. On the balcony, Josh and Wesley attack the jocks with more balloons while Angelica sprays the crowd with a blood-filled water blaster. The jocks use a ladder to try and reach the balcony, but Angelica pours a bucket of blood on the ascending jock. Then, Josh hits Turbo with a balloon and the masked leader stares at him coldly. Suddenly, Terry's neck is bitten by a ghoulie, killing him. More ghoulies approach, attracted to the blood covering the jocks. Turbo rallies his men and they hurriedly drive away from the scene. Meanwhile, the three escape through the back door of the apartment. Josh tells the other two to take a different route to the mall because the jocks want him more. When Josh separates from the two, he gets trapped in an alley wherein he hears the jocks approaching. He hides in a food truck while the jocks search for him. He takes out Sam's note and feels hopeless. On the night of the nuclear attack, Josh holds a flower outside a football field. He takes out his phone and is about to call Sam when several large explosions rock the city behind him. Around him, people panic in the pandemonium. 
He answers Sam's call, who cries and tells him she's bleeding. He promises to find her, but the call gets cut. In the present, Josh remembers his promise to Sam and needs to continue his search for her. As he stands up, the concession window opens and Turbo and Mona Lisa see him. Immediately, Josh escapes on a skateboard as the jocks tail him. Meanwhile, Wesley and Angelica see the mall's back entrance locked with a heavy chain. Behind them, a ghoulie approaches. Wesley lights up Angelica's flamethrower with his blunt. While Wesley tries to break the chains with his sword, Angelica's flamethrower sputters and malfunctions. Angelica backs away toward Wesley and tells him to kill the ghoulie. He insists he's a pacifist now, despite the zombie only a few feet away. Suddenly, Josh's blade pierces the ghoulie from behind. To his dismay, the ghoulie runs away, taking the sword with her. He then tells them that Turbo is after him, but Wesley doesn't think so because it's eerily quiet. Seconds later, Baron Triumph drives toward them before getting off his motorcycle. He removes his helmet and mask to Wesley and Josh's surprise. The mystery man is their classmate Eli Kardashian, but Josh quickly deduces that Eli isn't the real Baron Triumph due to his shoulder pads, lifted boots, and the handmade Triumph label and training wheels on his motorcycle. Josh asks Eli if Sam is inside the building, and the young man says it's just him and his girl Mavis. Suddenly, they see the real Baron heading their way, so Eli opens the lock and apprehensively lets the trio inside. Inside, the electricity keeps everything running, which Eli says is from the solar panels on the roof. Quickly, he leads Josh and Angelica to the other side of the mall and locks them behind a gate. He doesn't want them snooping around and warns them that he's rigged the exits with explosives and traps. Seconds later, Wesley joins them, and Eli is annoyed because he thought he had locked him in with the other two. All of a sudden, they hear a screech, and Eli says it's a hungry ghoulie witch with superpowers. After Eli walks away, Wesley promises he'll convince their captor to let them go. Meanwhile, Turbo hurls balls at the golf team, punishing them for allowing Josh to escape. Jerry suggests Turbo make the other tribes pay for the jock's protection, so Mona fires a group tech smoke flare to alert the neighboring factions. In the mall, Angelica asks Josh why he's so determined to find Sam. He shares that Sam is the only good person he's ever met. During the day at the mall, Sam makes Josh record her doling out compliments to people and brightening their day. Later, Hoyles torments Josh, ordering him to lick his shoes or get a beating. With Wesley and Turbo enabling the bully, Josh runs away. In the present, Angelica mocks Josh for being a coward in front of Sam. The ghoulie's screech interrupts their conversation, so Josh grabs the catch pole and heads out to search for the creature, in case it might be Sam. Inside a store, Josh sees a female ghoulie eating couch cushion filling. As the ghoulie is about to attack, Angelica sings to distract it before cutting her hand. The woman chases the young girl into a store, and when Josh catches up, he's disheartened to find the monster hunched over a body on the floor. When the woman moves out of the way, he sees that it's just a dummy. The girl then closes the store gate to lock the ghoulie inside. Josh calls out to Sam and the ghoulie recognizes him. When he looks at the woman's face, he finds that it's his biology teacher, Miss Crumble. While he's disappointed that it isn't Sam, Angelica is excited to encounter a ghoulie who hasn't completely lost its ability to think. Outside the mall, the Baron steps over the landmine wires to reach the mall entrance. Meanwhile, Wesley joins Eli who's taunting the Baron from behind the glass barrier, knowing he's protected by the explosives between them. Eli reminds Wesley how he and his friends stole his shoes and threw them over a telephone wire. Wesley says he's changed and apologizes for his past mistakes. When the two appear to have made peace, Wesley presses a key he slyly stole from Eli to release his friends, but Eli was onto him and switched out the keys. On the football field, the Disciples of Cardacia offers kegs of ale. The 4-H club offers their sheep, but the Stempunks arrive empty-handed. The nerds help the jocks with their generators and vehicle modifications, while getting bullied to give up their limited resources. As the leader speaks, the other members pass around and assemble a homemade pistol behind their backs, which the leader then uses to end Turbo's life. The nerd rejoices but fails to notice the real Turbo behind him, who grabs the weapon. Mona removes the mask off the body, revealing Jerry's lifeless face. Turbo makes his way up to his throne as Mona announces that the Stampunks will be put to death. Outside the mall, the Baron tries another entrance, but the door handle shocks him with electricity, angering him further. That day at the mall before the apocalypse, Miss Crumble covers for Josh when she sees him hiding in a clothing rack. In the present, Angelica thinks they should stay to study Miss Crumble and learn more about ghoulies. However, Josh is adamant about leaving if he only had a key. Unexpectedly, the ghoulie says she has a key. She proceeds to reach her arm into her unnaturally gaping mouth and throat. When she's unable to reach it, she asks Josh to do it. Terrified, Josh reluctantly enters the store and stuffs his arm down the ghoulie's esophagus to retrieve the key. Josh then finds the exit, but when the door opens, the ghoulie Josh stabbed with his sword earlier attacks him. Meanwhile, Wesley and Eli follow a noise to an ascending service elevator. 
Wesley knows Eli will need his friend's help. By the other exit, Josh is pinned to the ground when a blade pierces the ghoulie's head. Eli hands him his sword and hopes rescuing him was worth it. The group joins Wesley by the elevator. Eli shoots an arrow as the doors open, but the Baron blocks it with his arm protector. Then, Angelica charges, but is kicked back effortlessly by the masked man. Baron Triumph then uses a meteor hammer to disarm Josh off his sword. True to his nature, Wesley attempts to negotiate with the violent man, convinced it's his friend Hoyles. The Baron turns toward him, wielding a large knife as Wesley cowers into the elevator. Suddenly, Miss Crumble grabs the man's arm through the elevator hatch. She screams and jumps onto him, but the Baron easily throws her off. The woman stands up and ominously recites a spell, frightening the intruder, who escapes to the elevator. Moments later, Wesley thanks Eli for letting them stay and apologizes again for his past transgressions. Despite this, he still doesn't trust Eli not to off them in their sleep, so he closes the gate between them. Bested, Eli threatens to reveal the real reason why Wesley became a pacifist, alluding to the samurai's wrongdoings in the earlier days of the apocalypse. In the restroom, Josh rolls up his sleeve to reveal a ghoulie bind. He straps his arm to a chopping board and hacks himself with a sword. Months ago, outside the mall, Josh faces Hoyles and endures the beating. After the jocks leave, Sam hands him an iced dessert for his nose and the two kiss. In the present, Josh brings down his sword and cuts his finger clean off. Angelica hears his cries and is baffled by his ignorance for thinking the disease is spread through bites. She then shows Josh her own arm riddled with teeth marks. Seconds later, Josh loses consciousness and drops his dismembered digit on the floor. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.